Good morning, everybody. Well, for some of us, it is March 13th, 2018, 6.20 a.m. We are officially in Bomba Genesis territory. We have dropped 28 millibars in the last couple hours. Uh, actually happened overnight, so this is officially a Bomba Genesis situation. Once again, Bomba Genesis is when we drop 24 millibars in a 24-hour period. That happened a lot more quickly than expected. Uh, so this would be our second uh, Bombogenesis, basically, uh, bomb cyclone that we've had in two weeks. Our third nor'easter in ten days. Uh, possibly a fourth coming. Uh, if you can imagine that, I will show you that shortly. But right now, uh, you are seeing the hours leading up to present time. You're seeing why areas of North Carolina got snow. Uh, yesterday, uh, during the day, northeast Pennsylvania got hit, and now we are just getting slammed on the coasts. Uh, let's see here. Long Island, you are in the worst of it right now. Uh, should be winding down around 2 p.m., uh, 3 p.m. time, a little after lunch hour. Uh, mostly all over the island, including Montauk, 5 to 8 inches. Some areas got a little bit less. There's little gaps in here. Uh, hard to see. I have a few different charts pulled up for you uh, to look at today, but you can clearly see that uh, we have our counterclockwise spin, which is pulling that uh, high air into areas of Nantucket. We have Providence, Rhode Island there. We have Boston, which is uh, just now getting slammed. You will get uh, a foot of snow, at least in most areas of Boston, at least um, anywhere from the coast to 25 miles inland, uh, will be the worst of the snowfall. Wet, heavy snow to start. The temperature will drop a little bit. That will become harder, stingy snow, but it will be hard to shovel. That's the worst part about this storm is that there's a lot of wet snow because the temperatures on the ground are above freezing, but yet just above you in the atmosphere, um, it's a lot colder. And that's when the snow falls, it begins to melt as it gets closer to the ground, it gets bigger, you get those big snowflakes, that big wet heavy snow, and that's what no one likes. That's, that's what causes the power outages and the travel issues. Uh, for most of these areas. Now, Nantucket, you're getting 60 plus mile an hour wind gusts. Uh, there was a couple already recorded, and this thing isn't even there yet. So, we can expect the uh, possibility of even higher wind gusts in those areas, especially any areas exposed to the coast. Um, Montauk, uh, the exposed area of Connecticut, and then as we move up, um, areas in Rhode Island, Providence, New Bedford, um, and then we move into Nantucket. Uh, Boston, you are just now, like I said, getting hit with this storm. You're going to get 12 to 18 inches. There's no doubt about that. Uh, it just depends on how thick the snow is and how quickly it gets cold to make those snow, basically the snowflakes smaller as it gets colder, but that's more of an icy deal. So you're going to get that heavy, wet snowpack and then like an ice layer over it, which is never good because that, again, is what causes the power outages. Now, we have people... Uh, there's over 40 million people right now just in this New England area that are under uh, winter storm watch and warnings. Uh, a lot of those people don't have power. They haven't had power since uh, winter storm Quinn. There are even people that haven't had uh, power since winter storm Riley, which is now 10 days ago, uh, which is just horrible because this is just packing on. And then we could expect, I'm going to show you guys a little bit at the end of this video, uh, how we may see a fourth nor'easter uh, and it's just unbelievable at this point that we would see four nor'easters in a three-week span. Uh, let's see here. Like I said, Nantucket, 60 mile an hour gusts. Boston, you will expect 50 mile an hour gusts. You are already getting sideways snow as we speak. It is just now beginning as Long Island is going to be tapering off around 2 p.m. Uh, let's see, Plymouth, Massachusetts, the winds, you'll be 40 to 50 miles per hour. Uh, 5 p.m. is the expected time this should calm down and then as we move up into Providence areas uh, New Hampshire Vermont and Maine it is a foot of snow all across the board now I'm going to show you here on Ventus Sky a little bit of the accumulations let's see here snow cover uh, through Friday you can see these areas here uh, 26 inches of snow between now and Friday in areas of New Hampshire and Vermont, Massachusetts, you can't really see those 12 to 18s here. I don't know why it's not showing that, but you are expected to get over a foot of snow. Areas in middle New York, 14 inches. We have 21 inches up in northern New York. Uh, this is where the Appalachian Mountains are. Uh, just a big snowmaker. And as you can see here, let's look at this chart. Let me line you guys up here. I just wanted to zoom in a little more on the northeast rather than have the whole country pulled out. Uh, for this specific 
explanation here. And with the bombogenesis effect, like I said, 24 millibars in 24 hours is what is what causes bombogenesis. We've already broken that in a much shorter period of time. But as we're getting towards the end of the frames here, you can see the amount of moisture. Now, this moisture is being pulled all the way up from the Caribbean, which is what's fueling this thing. Not only that, but we had a system move across the Great Lakes, and that's what is Winter Storm Skylar. So we were talking about this five and six days ago that we were going to see this third nor'easter mixed with a winter storm so it's basically like a a hurricane of sorts in ways i mean the winds aren't that big not as big as quinn or riley but still sixty mile an hour winds are nothing to mess with uh... nantucket you are right in that area anytime there's something in the northeast you will deal with winds of that nature and again as we get towards the end of the frames here you can see how this thing pulled up areas of north carolina and south carolina got hit hard and then we just move up the line we got the chesapeake bay we got long island again two p.m. the snow should be tapering down and then we have connecticut rhode island and boston are now feeling the main effects of this and then anything north of this line i'm making right here with my mouse it's almost a guaranteed foot. There are spots of five to eight, but it is that wet, wet, heavy snow that they're going to be dealing with, and then it's going to get colder. And the thing with this storm is this is not the end of it. Um, again, northeast Pennsylvania, we're supposed to get snow tomorrow, and that is because this thing is going to move up the coast, and then it's going to swing snow back into us from the Caribbean. You can see that stretch right here. Once I back this up again, you can see it's almost at that shape of a nine. That's moisture being pulled up from the Caribbean and then being spun around, which is what causes our nor'easter with the snowstorm Skylar moving into it. So we have two low pressure systems meeting each other and they meet in the northeast. It's always the northeast and that's all based on the jet stream. Now, there's two different types of nor'easters. There's a, uh, a negative and a positive, and it all depends on where the lows and highs are. This is considered a low because the jet stream is at a shallow angle. Had the jet stream been dipped down way down here like this, that would be a positive uh, nor'easter, and that's what would cause and bring the snow to the southern states. So we have seen that, but that's not the situation here. This is strictly a northeast uh, situation as of now. Again, areas of North Carolina and Virginia and West Virginia did get snow from this but it's still considered a uh, negative or a positive uh, nor'easter it's all based on jet stream lines which we talk about frequently here and we will be talking about a lot as hurricane season approaches but you can see here as we move through time that moisture gets whipped back around and then in Wednesday and Thursday you can see right here northeast Pennsylvania we have New Jersey here and then New York again and that is why the snow accumulations here are so high because this thing will affect us through Thursday and that's what's going to drop 24 inches of snow in certain areas of the northeast so once again we are dealing with this and we could be dealing with another one guys which is just I don't know what to even say anymore about this weather, but there it is right there. A lot can change between now and the 20th. So we have seven days, but if this thing is does start moving up the coast and take a more shallow angle, this could be our fourth nor'easter of the season. As of right now, it looks like it's going to pass off into the ocean because we do have a high pressure that is finally moving from where my mouse is. I know this is hard to understand without the map here. The high pressure is up here, which is causing that big bow in the jet stream, and it starts to move back into this area uh, over Canada, and that's what's going to cause the jet stream to possibly allow this thing to move right out into the ocean. Still, though, whether or not this becomes a nor'easter or not, you can see there is snowfall from it. We have West Virginia covered in snowfall, and then below that we have the Carolinas, um, basically covered in massive amounts of rain so it's just system after system after system and even in between those days we have a little bit of stuff that moves into the northeast we have some pinks here freezing and rain situations on its way uh, but you can see how this thing begins to kind of form right after the Colorado Rockies it comes in from the west it does, yes, it does. It comes in over what, like Washington, Oregon, Northern California, and then it begins to form just as it passes over the Rocky Mountains, and that's when we could see our next winter storm. And once again, there's the low moving across, Mimo the Elf, 
and then here we have it there so this is expected around March the 20th again depending on the jet stream lines you can see those in blue here caused by the high pressure if this thing does decide to come up the coast it could meet with this storm a little sooner it could be a little after it could be the 22nd it could be the 18th we just don't know yet anything five days out is basically a coin toss and then unfortunately guys you see this out here um, I don't even want to get into that but that is possibly another system on its way uh, depending on temperatures will depend on whether this is snow or rain and then we are basically going to be in hurricane season soon so the last uh, year and a half we have had some crazy weather going on and it does not have any signs of slowing down I, I expect this hurricane season to be just as bad if not worse than last year uh, just because of the atmospheric conditions right now as of right now the Gulf is ready for hurricanes we are at a steady 80 degrees uh, maybe not 80 degrees like right on the beaches but the, the core of the Gulf of Mexico is at 80 degrees. That water is bleeding in, and we have our west to east um, strip all the way from uh, South Africa all the way to the U.S. ready to go. Uh, so that is prime time for hurricane stuff. Now here are our blizzard warnings. Like you could see Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Boston, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut. Um, and even Long Island here still, like I said, will be running down around 2 p.m. And then as the day goes on, this thing just moves straight up, just totally covering these areas in at least a foot of snow. We have blizzard warnings in parts of New York, winter storm advisories all over New York, and then still I'm in this part of PA too. We had just ended overnight last night. Uh, we have snow on the ground. It is The streets are beginning to melt only because they had time to treat. And besides that, this thing's going to whip around and then give us one more round before it actually moves off into the Atlantic. And we can say bye-bye to number three and possibly hello to number four. Uh, I know, hard to believe at this point. Uh, let's get some wind speeds here before I let you guys go. We'll move back to the 13th. Uh, we can see we are easily in 60 mile an hour winds with this thing spinning as it moves up the coast. So Nantucket again, Long Island, you're getting 50 mile an hour gusts right now even though you have that blockage of Boston and Rhode Island in between you. Um, it says 38 here, Ventus Sky always low balls, um, wind speeds and uh, snowdrop. That's why I, I usually use it for hurricane season, but this is a good chart to use for uh, showing wind direction. So you can see how this thing's moving in a counterclockwise motion. Uh, and then we got areas of the, the Nantucket area, a uh, consistent 60 mile an hour. Those are sustained. Those aren't wind gusts. So you could get wind gusts above 70 easily with this storm. And then as it moves up throughout the day, here's 2 p.m., you can see that's when Boston starts getting exposed to this storm. 12 to 18 inches all over Boston, Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, you will see probably 18 inches of snow. Uh, New York City around 2 p.m. today along with Long Island. Again, this thing will be moving out but again once this thing gets up into this area right around here let's move to the 14th and 15th here's the 14th you can still see it has its polar movements here and it's going to continue to whip moisture down into these areas and it's going to get caught up in this west to east wind here and it's still pulling the moisture up from the Caribbean and that is why we will continue to see snow in areas of New York and Pennsylvania and New Jersey and Boston and Long Island for the next two days so it is not over until it's over and then after that we have a little bit of a break may get some warmer temperatures and again by the time we get to March 20th that will all depend on uh, temperature uh, right now it is cold enough to snow again it does not have to be freezing for it to snow it's just got to be freezing high enough to not allow the snow to melt before it hits the ground that is why we're seeing these ridiculous levels of snow in the New England area alright guys I don't want to keep you too long I will be back later on this afternoon with an update we'll talk about Boston some more and then we need to get into Vermont New Hampshire and Maine who are getting the brunt of this storm uh, besides the areas of Nantucket and Boston which are getting the high wind rates and the blizzard the side Sideways snow, you never want to see that. And we will talk about power outages. Still, people without power for the last 10 days going into a third nor'easter. All right, guys, be safe out there. Have a good day. I'll talk to you soon.